What if I told you when it comes to mounting tires on rims, every technician does something, but they don't know why, and they're making a crucial mistake, and it relies on this yellow and red dots that you see on the side of the tire. So, to the general viewer who doesn't know, it has been taught for ages that when mounting and balancing tires, you line these dots on the side of the tire up to the valve stem. That is 50% correct. What if I told you that most technicians do not understand what it means? And once you're finished watching this video, you're gonna have a better understanding. And hopefully I teach a few technicians something. So I went and marked up one of my tires here. So as you can see, we have a red dot. We're gonna put that as H for heavy. We have our valve stem. We're also gonna put that right here. We're gonna mark it. We're gonna say that's H2 for heavy and I'll get back to that. And then the yellow one is gonna be L for light. So if you've already picked up what's going on here, it involves weights and it involves weights of the actual tire without a rim on. So allow me to reiterate for the general viewer, not necessarily, well, even the mechanics out there. We've always been told to line up the dots to the valve stem. But what most mechanics didn't find out is what do you do when there's two dots and there is a procedure here. So if you have a tire and it comes in and it only has this yellow dot, the yellow indicates the lightest of the tire. So right here on this section, it is light compared to the rest of the tire in its circumference. That you would line up with the valve stem because what people don't realize is the valve stem is the heaviest point of the rim unless marked. And there are manufacturers out there who will mark these rims with a heavy spot and it's not all manufacturers, but some of them do. So generally, yellow is lined up with the valve stem. What happens when you have a red and a yellow? Well, the red takes priority, but the red means it's the heaviest part of the tire. And a lot of technicians will rotate that to the valve stem without even realizing that. So now you put a heavy spot on a heavy spot and I guarantee you, on if I were to look at tires, not these ones, there would be a bunch of wheel weights on the inside over here. And I bet you that tire is gonna be really hard to balance. So here's a slight example. So here's the valve stem, here's the red dot, and this is all depends on the technician. And if you come to the opposite side here, here's all the wheel weights. It's not 100% lined up, but where the wheel weights are placed depends on the technician. As you can see here, he took, <laughs> see when I see this and this, the person had to do it twice. So he could have put the weights over here and it probably would have been better, but this is all technician fault or error as they say. So I can tell you two things from what we just looked at the, that rim. One is it's a static balance, meaning the technician struggled to balance it. So he put it on static and he did the worst possible balance in my opinion. And two, that will shake at hundred kilometers an hour or 90 miles per hour. Guarantee you that rim will shake. And there's a lot. So I'll tell you something from experience. I've learned over the years, if I have to put an ounce and a half on the outside, an ounce and a half on the inside, that's the maximum. That's the most I'll do. Any more in that in weights, then I know there's an issue. I need to stop, reevaluate I've done. Is the tire marks lined up? Is the rim bent or is there something else going on? Uneven wear? If it's new tires, I never ran into that issue because I did what I was supposed to in the initial mountain balance. You line everything up, you're gonna use very, very little wheel weights. And one of the side effects of this is you don't have any comebacks for odd vibrations or shakes. So some of the extreme things I've seen is having perfectly balanced tires, but you got weird wear on it. And it took me some time to figure out because if it's not the suspension, what the hell is it? Is it the alignment? No, if you've eliminated those two things, it's the wheel balance. You go for a road test, you're like, okay, I go up to 80 kilometers an hour. It's not shaking. I go to 90, it's not shaking. I go to 100, it's not shaking. You hit 110, you're like, oh, there it is. That's my tire wear, unbalanced tire. You throw the damn thing on the machine and it's showing balance. So what's that tell you? You need to do a different type of balance. You need to crack this off the rim, uh, rotate it and reseat it and balance it again. A lot of this can be eliminated just with these dots and finding a marked rim if your manufacturer actually marks them. So yeah. And by the way, I'm not fussy. I just know I can eliminate 99% of the bullshit work orders I got back in the day by starting with simple basic things like this. It's the basics that will make or ruin you in the automotive industry and this is a lot of stuff that even senior technicians don't understand. So yeah, back to basic series. I hope you like this. I'm keeping it short and simple. Simple. If you want me to talk about other things, trust me, there's a lot I can talk about. Anyways, uh, if you love the channel, hit like. Uh, Lance Mechanics, I enjoy this stuff. I hope you do too. Have now for some bonus footage. 
I should have put this early in the video. If you want to be the absolute best technician, spin the rim up without a tire on it and mark the high and low spots. So when you get the tire and you go to mount and balance it, you can line it up accordingly. Um, this is going above and beyond. I understand the state side's flat rate, uh, but if you want to go that extra mile and be that technician, it will pay off in the long run. Take care.